Now, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by the stars of the last five years, which is about to open at the Greenwich Theatre. I'm joined in the studio by Daniel Hope. Hello, Daniel. Hello. Uh, no Stranger the Curtain Up show, John Robbins, who's Hi. been here many times. I think it's your third time. It is indeed. Danielle, you're a virgin to the Curtain Up I show, am, so yes. welcome. Thank you. And uh, Pesky Peskin, uh, Katie Peskin, <laughs> who's the show's producer and director. Hello, welcome back, dear. Thanks for having me. I got it right. You got way. welcome for yeah. having me. And uh, so now, the last five years, of course, is probably Jason Robert Brown's most, I would say, most famous musical of everything he's written. Um, Danielle, tell us a little bit about it, those people who don't know what it's about. Well, it's two people in a relationship, and it's obviously over the five-year course of that. And um, Kathy, the character that I'm playing, um, starts in retrograde. So she starts at the end of the relationship, and um, the character John's playing, Jamie, starts at the beginning. And it's um, a song cycle, so I start, and then John carries on. And it's um, I just think it's a really interesting way of doing a song cycle, having two people talking about exactly the same relationship, but at very different ends of it. And you have, you know, the first song is still hurting, and then it moves on to John's song when they've just met and I think that's a really crazy kind of like dynamic shift mm -hmm. constantly so the, uh, in the middle of the show are they in this they're obviously at the same yes they the meet once I think what is it like eight bars or something we have together for the whole show yeah. so it's like a one woman and a one man show that kind of come together for a little oh, bit oh really I didn't know because I've never seen it before so I didn't I thought it was it was more as a, a double act as opposed to I think it feels like a double act, um, but because you, we spend most of the time on our own talking about each other, yeah. don't we? Yeah. yeah. I think that maybe the point Jason Robert Brown's trying to make is that the communication is always misfiring. So she's in one place, he's in another, and the only time they're truly in sync with each other, harmonically and spiritually, is at their wedding. Um, uh. And then they cross paths. She goes backwards in time from their wedding to when they meet and he goes forward in time from their wedding to um, when they divorce. <coughs> so, so, it's, it's, so it's not a successful relationship then? Uh, no, but you, you get, you were not, we're not giving any spoilers. The first line, is, <laughs> the first line that Kathy uh, and Daniel has is, Jamie's over and Jamie's gone. So you know, you know where you're going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of suspense. Yeah, so. you know where you're going. It's just, it's a really clever musical and Jason Robert Brown's managed to make it bittersweet all the way through. Mm -hmm. So where your sympathies lie continually change mm -hmm. and what sort of um what sort of the, the rehearsal process for this have you had because obviously if there's not much together is it quite um <laughs> well we're about to start on sunday aren't yeah, we so short, you've not started no rehearsal no we start process. on sunday very excited don't gasp i know i know but <laughs> I think... to me. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot to pull together in 10 days yeah but with there only being two of us, mm. you know, pressure's on. But and has the producer hashtag director sent you the music hashtag. beforehand? Oh yes, yes, we've <laughs> we've got all of that. So we've been working yeah. away on lyrics and things. I think that's always the trickiest part, isn't it? It's just getting those lyrics in the brain. I'll be perfectly honest with you, Tim. I've known the show more or less off by heart since about two thousand and three. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so when it's I got asked to do can't. this, I know I was going to say yeah. something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when I got asked to do the show, I thought, yeah, that's fine. I can do that. I can probably do that tonight. To be perfectly honest. <laughs> But give me an hour, I'll just yeah. think over and a cup of tea and a fag and I'll be on. <laughs> um, Katie, why did you decide to produce the last five years? It's just a brilliant show and it doesn't get done a hell of a lot in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, it is actually, it's just been made into a movie in America, which is coming out later this year. Who's in it? Uh, Anna Kendrick and Jeremy Jordan are playing Kathy and Jamie. I believe they've written in other parts, but in, right. in the stage show it's just the two of them. Um, and I just, it's just, a, the music is stunning and it's kind of gut-wrenching which, isn't it? which is the <laughs> song about uh, an ice pick in my eye is that from the last five years yes, summer 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 summer. i love that song it's great isn't it it's really lovely Even Again, though the, lots of words. the middle of that the middle bit of that song sounds like a different song though do you know what I mean when he goes? He wants me, but he can't help oh, me. Oh yes, do you yeah. know what I mean that bit? The bridge bit in the middle, <laughs> yeah. exactly like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> Fiddle your fingers <laughs> like that. Um, what's it, John? Have you ever sort of worked in just a two-hand show before? Um, I haven't. Uh, I've done uh, a five-hander. The, the Dickens Abridged show that I did at Christmas was five guys playing four hundred parts, um, but this is two people playing one part each, so it's quite a novelty. And I did spam a lot for two years, and that was fifty parts each. So I'm quite looking forward to it. <laughs> to just being one person, to being one on the guy way for an hour and a half. Yeah, Katie, um, as a as obviously because John said he knows the show really well. Um, have you sort of 
explain to them the style you want to do it in or because it must be very different mustn't it because as an actor sometimes i think we all have that sort of vision of what we want to do with it and of course we get into the rehearsals and the director says actually you're all going to be clowns <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've got news for you guys yeah. Yeah. Whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i think i think because it's so character driven the show and it's it's about their relationship so i think it's about getting that right for danielle and john rather than me being like i want jamie to be like this i think they've got to find it for themselves and they did we had a photo shoot and they've got great chemistry already <laughs> so yeah. i think we're going to be fine and i suppose also because it's a it's 200 it's a very simple musical as well in lots of respects so set wise you'll probably just keep it minimalistic will you? yeah i mean we Chows, are stools uh, no Cushions. chairs and stools, oh, I'm afraid. Good. Good. Um, <laughs> have but... to stand up, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are things to sit on, don't worry. Yeah. Um, but we've got the brilliant Sam Wire doing our set. He just did the Elephantum. Ah. So um, it's going to be quite pretty, I believe. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Very symbolic. Rather than and it's, it's at the Greenwich Theatre, isn't it? Yeah, Which who is... Greenwich are also co-producing the show. And we're at Greenwich, and then we're going to Brighton the week after. For the Fringe Festival? Yes. Oh, fantastic. What week yeah. are you there? Uh, the week after we're at Greenwich, so it's the 21st to the 24th. Oh, where are you Brighton, playing in Brighton? At the Warren. What time's your show? Um, at it's, at, <laughs> it's at 7.30 on the 21st and the 22nd, and at 4 on the 24th. Oh, I might come and see it. Tree I'm going to be there doing Thatcher show about Thatcher do it come so along. I might pop along and see it Danielle obviously you've just finished In Les Miserables yes at the lovely Queen's Theatre and of course most people will know you from The Wizard of Oz at the Palladium mm -hmm. the Greenwich Theatre is slightly smaller isn't it it is yes and very exposing and there's <laughs> two of us and I've just done like you say The Wizard of Oz which is huge and I get to cart a dog everywhere and everyone knows that I'm obsessed with dogs um, <laughs> and then Les Mis which is so ensemble driven and you're constantly surrounded by people um all the time I think this is a very different challenge for me and I was so interested in the project and doing this role because um, it is very you are very like kind of exposed and it's just yeah. two of us that's it you know you've got nothing to rely on and the music is beautiful and I just think there's so much complexity in the characters mm -hmm. and so much to kind of like just delve into and I just see it as a huge huge challenge um, and a bit of a transition role as well for me because you know I did Dorothy and then Eponine yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're kind of like young adults so I think like this will be my first adult role really so I'm really excited about it and is there any more sort of roles in future you like to get your hands on Oh gosh, definitely. I mean, we've all got those dream roles. Mine's definitely Natalie in Next to Normal and Mary Poppins. Those two, really. I know, couldn't be more different. Couldn't be more different. Um, yeah, they're my two. Well, I think Mary Poppins will probably be due for a revival in a couple of oh, years' time. Oh, fingers won't crossed. It? Fingers crossed. And John, you've been in, in many shows, you know, A Spam a Lot, Miss Saigon, They Miss as well. Rent, is there any sort of things you would like to do? Any roles that you've got your eye on in the future? Uh, well, that sounds ridiculous. I've always wanted to do this. Was, really? Yeah. I, I said, I know it since 2003, I did. I used to walk to college every morning listening to this, so I, <laughs> so I would learn it. Um, this is a role I've always, always wanted to play. So um, this is actually kind of a dream come true, which is great. Um, I get asked that question a lot. I think we all get asked that question a lot because musical theatre is about reproduction mm. as much as production and rediscovery and recreation, you know. I had to do what Michael Ball did when I played Marius, and that was separated by 25 years. Mm. Um, I think this sort of thing is, is the holy grail for musical theatre. You get to create things um, and really kind of spread your wings artistically. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, let's, let's see what parts come up in the future. Well, I, th I think you'll, you'll both have a, a long career in musical theatre, or a longer career in musical theatre, <laughs> I should say. And of course, the <laughs> last five years is at the Greenwich Theatre. Um, next week, is it? From the fifteenth, no, fifteenth, 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 seventeenth. We've still got ten May. days rehearsal yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Although, let's give it a go tonight. See how it goes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Cool. Clearly, John will be fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am going to forget my words every night. Now. I know. Watch, watch this. A question for you, because you've both been in, you know, I'd say Wizard of Oz and Name Is and Name Is and Spam a lot. Yeah. When you're having to do eight shows a week, and it's you know it can be a long contract, especially twelve months. How do you keep it fresh? Well. You're, we're human so you can't do the same thing twice ever it's impossible isn't it and you've got different people around you so no one is ever going to deliver you their lines the mm -hmm. same way twice and you're never going to say the same thing mm. exactly the same way twice are you i guess as long as you're just listening and active you're uh, and you've had have you had any of those uh rabbit and headlights moments where you just go i don't know what's next. Well, you're blank. oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i once forgot the words to on my own how do you do that I <laughs> 
<laughs> like, oh yeah. my goodness. I find that the eight show a week thing helps with that because there is a certain degree of muscle memory involved when you do repetition. When you do repetition, yeah. And, yeah. Um, when you do eight shows a week for a year or two years, your mouth does it. Your brain is in it when you're on, and then when you walk off stage, the thought occurs of, "Did I say all my lines? I don't mm. remember." Is it like that drive that you do for between two places you know very well, yeah, yeah. and you don't remember it? You do it almost an autopilot. But if something went wrong, you you'd be awake. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it is, it is funny doing eight shows a week. The thing about the last five years is that we're not doing eight shows a week. <laughs> no. We're doing no. seven shows over two weeks. So. We are going to have to be on it the mm-hmm. whole time, and I swear to God, there's so many lyrics. It never stops, and and it's <laughs> it's almost all soliloquy. It's almost yeah, yeah, yeah. all delivered mm-hmm. straight to the audience, and you've got to connect to the audience directly. So if the audience aren't with you, you're going to feel it. Yeah. In a show like Les Mis that we've both that we've both performed in in a in a big playhouse like um, the Queens, like the Queens um, if the back row aren't quite paying attention, you're not really going to know. If the front row aren't paying attention, you know, but you can get you develop a kind of feel towards the audience of whether they're with you or not but with this we're going to know so you can come, <laughs> come, come and watch us and keep us on the hook yeah is what it's I'm amazing saying. as well because with like the last five years and projects that have only like two cast members in them it's really hard to get more than like a one or two night run mm-hmm. and we're doing are we doing seven shows seven. Yeah. like that's amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. for this production so yeah. that's really exciting and it's much cheaper for the producer, isn't it? Only <laughs> 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 have two people in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, don't know, you don't know how much we're charging. Yeah, yeah. that's true, actually. Um, and we should also say, of course, that um, one thing that I'm really interested in is when you get on stage to do, you know, the, the show, is the energy as well. Mm-hmm. Because obviously, if, if you don't have a lot to do together... Yeah. It's like that thing I remember at drama school when they say about keeping the balls in the air, darling. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's to not let the yeah. energy drop as well. And our dynamics it? are so very different all the way through, yeah. constantly changing from song to song. So that's going to be something that we kind of find and figure yeah. out in rehearsals. And, and the piece is written so that they interject within songs as well. So there's a phone conversation that each of them have at various points so you just see them on the phone talking to somebody else in a different time frame as the song that's underscoring mm. it so the audience have to keep paying attention as to where each character is um which sounds more complicated than it is it's yeah. very it's very it's very accessible when you watch it um when you explain it it isn't but when you watch <laughs> it it is i promise and jason robert brown those people who don't know his style of music how would you describe his style of musical theater um, it's based in jazz and blues, um, but it's all narrative. So the lyrics are, like I say, very accessible, very modern. Mm-hmm. Um, the music is very driving. It's got that kind of almost boogie-woogie bass feel to it. Um, uh, it's it's funny because Jason Robert Brown's been around in the mainstream for about 15 years now, mm-hmm. and he's been copied by so many other uh, composers, yes, yeah, yeah. his style is almost its own style now. So when you say there's a Sondheim style or an Andrew Lloyd Webber style, Jason Robert Brown is a style in itself, and you could write parodying type mm-hmm. um, pastiches on his on his music, and it would be recognisable. So to you know, real show queens like myself, I instantly <laughs> recognise what Jason Robert Brown's music sounds like, and I've always loved it, and I think audiences who have never heard it will find it very um uh, again accessible and listenable great well i hope the show goes well the last five years it's at the greenwich theater from the 15th to the 17th of may and then the warren theater in brighton the 21st to the 24th of may for more information and to book tickets visit greenwichtheatre.org.uk or brightonfringe.org.uk guys thank you so much for joining us on thank the show nice thank to you. welcome you danielle and nice to see katie and john